It's a very exciting day today, a very big day today, you might even say as well, because it is the last day of September. One of the most boring times, one of the most boring months in Bitcoin's history, traditionally a boring time anyways. But in this case, we do have some very exciting things to be looking forward to as we get to uh, and revisit some of these September statistics and also look at some of the very important things that are closing tonight for the monthly that can heavily influence October and essentially what to expect uh, within that time frame. Anyways, a little bit of a funny story before we get into this one. As you probably already know, I am competing in the crypto fight night event in Dubai on November 24th. And uh, yesterday, my opponent, Trading Lord, came over to my villa in order to do a little bit of a uh, promotional um, uh, shooting, let's say. And uh, <laughs> it's very interesting, I'll say. Very, very interesting, you know, because he comes in and he's kind of got a bit of a tough guy act on. He's talking a little bit of shit, a little bit rude, I might say as well. Um, <laughs> you know, a bit of bravado, let's say. A bit of bravado. And I'm just like, hey, you know, welcome to my villa, man. It's all good. It's all good. But with that in mind, with when he started to act like that, it just made me hate the guy. And, you know, you have to understand, like, before this, I didn't even know the guy. Didn't hate him. Didn't even not like him. Just didn't even know him. You know? No opinion, really. But seemed like a nice kid, actually, from the videos that I have seen. But <laughs> now it's like, now it's like, I don't even care if I win this damn match. I just want to fucking hurt you. I just want to fucking hurt you. That's all I care about at this point. Doesn't even matter if I win. So, you know, I spend the night searching up what are the best ways to actually hurt someone in a boxing match. Because... You can do that. <laughs> you can literally do that. It's legal. You know, usually if you punch someone, usually if you hurt someone, usually if you hurt someone, you go to jail. You get sent in a cage. But in this case, you get a medal, which is beautiful, which is great, which is amazing, actually. Anyways, uh, <laughs> funnily enough, the best way isn't to knock someone out. In fact, uh, it doesn't really matter that much. You know, you get knocked out for a couple seconds. It's like going to sleep. A little bit of a slumber party right there. The best way, actually, is to punch someone so fucking hard in the nose, so fucking hard in the nose that their nose goes into their skull and into their fucking brain. There's actually a straight line to there. It's kind of crazy. Anyways, looking forward to that date now. Very much looking forward to that date. It's all love, my friends. It's all love. See you there. It'll be live streamed. Anyways, you don't give a fuck about that. You give a fuck about the magic and the money, which we'll get be, be getting into right now. And first things first, I want to start off with a, um, a follow-up of the uh, quad witching analysis that we put out for September. Now, the quad witching date was September 15th. It's a very important one because it is a major expiration. You have four major expiries. You got uh, equity options. You got uh, future. You got index options. You got futures and then uh, future in, index futures, something like that. Four big ones. And a, a lot of money managers are, you know, essentially, you know, making big, big, um, what's it called, uh, decisions during these times um, as they kind of, you know, have things move off the books and they have to roll them over to the next expiration or, you know, just manage their positions. So that's why you do see a lot of major pivots points around this time. Anyways, a lot of people are aware or, or or under the impression that September is a generally down month. Yes, indeed it is. Statistically speaking for Bitcoin, absolutely. <clears throat> and traditional marks as well, actually. Uh, but what people are less aware of and what we really focused on on this channel is that from that quad witching date, which was September 15th this year, to the end of the month, um, if we look back at all of them throughout the history of Bitcoin, throughout the whole history of, uh, of, um, of, of, of Bitcoin in this case, well, we noticed that that was generally a positive period. Um, if we go and reference these statistics over here, we can see that 10 out of the full 13 of, uh, of, of, of these times, you know, quad witching in September to the end of September, have closed, um, you know, with positive gains with an average return of just over five and a quarter percent. That was very, very interesting, isn't it? Because if we go over to um, uh, the chart right here and start from around that date, we can see what a Bitcoin gain? About four and a half percent about four and a half percent. So very much in alignment with that. Um, I would say that that data is, uh, well, good. I, I, it's not that it's good. It's just, it is what it is, but you know, living in alignment with that. So, you know, spot price action probably going to be influenced with where, uh, CME closed. Sorry, CME was over here and that's why it should be maybe a little bit higher. Yeah, more like 480, 480. So a little bit higher there. Um, spot price action trading a little bit lower than that right now. So maybe it you know has a little bit of a pump into the end of the uh, monthly close here. But um, but ultimately, you know, setting up for a rather interesting October. We'll get into the October statistics tomorrow. Um, today's video, I want to focus a little bit more on the more pressing concerns for tonight's closure for the monthly. So um, <clears throat> before we actually get into the monthly closure, I do want to go over the weekly for CME. Obviously, the weekly uh, did close yesterday, as did the monthly. And in this case, we can see that the weekly um, is going to show that stochastic momentum will turn back onto the upside as Bitcoin did close above 26,450. It closed, uh, sorry, on CME, the same pivot, 26,200. Um, did close almost a thousand bucks above that pivot. And we are seeing big, uh, the weekly stochastic also to cross the upside for the first time 
uh, sorry, in the same vicinity as this area right here for the first time since December of 2022. December of 2022 obviously was this area right here before Bitcoin got ready for a more than 50% run over the course of the next couple months. Okay, interesting. Um, I will also highlight that, uh, whoops, let me get over here. Yeah, there we go. Um, I will also highlight that, you know, for CME specifically on the weekly, BBWP uh, representing volatility um, has been the lowest for the longest forever. Uh, it's in the full history. What I'm trying to say is current BBWP has been the lowest and the long and the longest for lowest or the lowest for longest that has ever been ever in CME's history um, on the weekly time frame. So technically speaking, theoretically speaking, uh, mathematically speaking, the resolution from this volatility expansion phase over here should be bigger than this one or even this one, which are the only two really comparable ones. Both were 50% moves to the downside and the upside, respectively. Um, you know, as volatility is direction neutral, uh, although in both cases they did move in the same direction as the stochastic oscillator. <clears throat> and uh, and took about two months, you know, 56 days versus 64 days. So two iterations, not much to be going off of. I certainly wouldn't put too much weight on it, but just for the shits and giggles, and maybe for the YouTube, YouTube, the YouTube ab algorithm, the derpity, the derp, the herpity derp algorithm. Um, you know, what would 50% on top of current price action look like? That would put Bitcoin basically back to, back around the May 2022 um, uh, breakdown area, which, you know, does it hit it from here? I don't fucking know over the next couple of months. Again, a couple iterations, not very uh, compelling, at least in my opinion. But, uh, you know, at some point, that 38,000 uh, level over here is going to be very um, relevant just because that is, you know, a prior major, major macro breakdown region. Um, anyways, uh, now that we've gone through that, let's go into the monthly for CME, which again did close already yesterday. And the monthly did reclaim the 20 simple, that white moved average right here. That was at 26,950 or 958, I should say. And uh, closing price was 27,100. And the 20 simple should move down coming into um, uh, October. So giving Bitcoin a little bit of a uh, little bit of leeway there, let's say. Um, and I would be looking at, you know, wherever that level is in October as, you know, maybe a bit of a basing point if Bitcoin pulls back, because um, in the short term, it certainly can. It's probably not going to be like straight up. Uh, as far as uh, why that's even relevant, why the 20 simple is even relevant, well, it's a very simplistic piece of analysis, but, you know, simplistic doesn't necessarily mean bad, and it has been working throughout the full history of Bitcoin, so I'll just go over it anyways. Um, but basically, anytime that Bitcoin is above the yellow 20 simple moon average, Generally good. Generally, you're screaming bull markets with massive girthy green dildos to the upside. Um, and when Bitcoin's below it, generally your bear markets, as you see right here, right here, and a little bit right here, and definitely right here, <clears throat> um, uh, where Bitcoin breaks down and goes to hell and beyond. Um, anyways, uh, as you can see, Bitcoin is going to have a chance to reclaim it tonight on spot price action, uh, 26 950 is the pivot and uh you know again just generally perusing over it you know anytime bitcoin's been below the 20 simple those have been great accumulation times anytime bitcoin's been above it well those are your screaming bull markets especially when the 20 simple does have a positive slope as well right now it does not it has a negative slope still so <clears throat> you know that does need to be said um but obviously the longer that bitcoin's you know hangs around there it will turn back neutral and then you know uh for the bull sake hopefully positive again anyways um yeah, so some uh, so so some fun stuff right there. Anyways, we are already eight and a half minutes into this bitch. Um, where do I want to take this one now? Do we go over uh, HPDR ranges? I mean, again, I just want to kind of focus on this right here. Like, look, anytime that it did break, I mean, these were like the the big move down. You know, the bigs the bigs moves downs, um, and anytime it's reclaimed, I mean, it's generally been good as well. So, yeah. Very simplistic piece of analysis, but has worked um, thus far throughout the full history of Bitcoin. So, uh, just you know, another tick in the Bula's court um, if that uh, if that is fulfilled. Anyways, uh, moving on now, let's get into some more statistics. Look at HPDR ranges over here. Um, four hour time frame, uh, as we did say yesterday, cracked above and closed above the tops out of the blue 50% uh, of historic returns range highs for the first time um, in a while, uh, indicating perhaps an early breakout. And now we also see the 50% range starting to shift up here. So it's stepped up. Now the bottom side is coming in at 26,300. Top side's coming in at 27,7 or just below 27,7. Um, and in this case, you know, we see a potential reversal going on. Why? Well, we have a low, we have a high, we have a higher low. We don't have a higher high just yet. Or not we, but Bitcoin doesn't have a higher high just yet. Uh, but let's say, you know, it trades back above this 27.5 high right here, especially above uh, this region right here, which is kind of one of the same at this point. That would very likely be a damn good indica uh, indication of, of a breakout, thus continuation to the upside. And probably Bitcoin at least trades up 
close to 29. Um, personally speaking, I'd probably be looking closer to 30. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be in the same move, but you know you can kind of see that. Uh, by the same token, if Bitcoin does lose 26.3, at that point, I would still really you know uh, look for a move back down to the mid 25s. Um, even if Bitcoin does reclaim the 20 simple over here, you know that's still in the cards. Obviously, um, the 20 simple is actually moving down about 600 bucks, a thousand to 600 bucks um, each and every passing month. So you know currently at 26.9 could very well be in the upper tw upper or mid 25. So they could come back down base there really quickly and then try to move to the upside. Um, what, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, it could look like something like this. Um, but generally speaking, I'm looking at all this area right here as probably an opportunity again assuming that uh, bitcoin does complete those closures that we're looking at um so it could still takes more time you know uh you know maybe the first week of october it trades back down there and then and then out again you know just a little bit more boring fuck you -ness, um just uh just uh just one last fuck you before moving out outside of the range um of course uh i would be heavily bearish heavily fucking bearish if bitcoin does trade below the september lows but so far so good and that's generally been my narratives for uh I guess ever since this happened over here. So as long as Bitcoin's above there, generally favoring, favoring long-term upside. Bitcoin does trade below September lows. Big bad problem for the Bulaws, very likely down to the very low 20,000s, like 22 to 21,000 bucks. Uh, but so far, so good. Anyways, um, now that we have gone through uh, the HPDR range, let's go through stochastic momentum, starting off with the two-day time frame. Uh, let's go to spot price action because it's the one that's actually trading right now. Uh, we even spoke about the uh, inverted herp and derp yesterday. I forgot about that one. But anyways, uh, two-day time frame, stochastic momentum remains the upside above uh, 26,400. All right, not bad. Daily time frame uh, will also be freshly crossing the upside um, as far as momentum goes, as long as Bitcoin's above 26,750, currently about 200 bucks above that pivot. 12-hour time frame is going to be also showing upside above 26,5. Six-hour time frame is going to be down, I believe. Yeah, freshly crossing down below 27,1, uh, although not just there just, just yet, but on this next period it will be. Four-hour time frame is going to be showing downside momentum below 27,1 as well, and hourly is, I suspect, up. Indeed it is, above uh, 26,900, so... You know, what does that mean? I mean, I'm seeing a lot of bifurcation there, or at least a little bit of bifurcation there. So a bit more sideways, perhaps, you know, weekend bullshit and real market starts on Monday, uh, most likely. Um, what else do I have to say other than that? I think that's basically it. Yeah, I think that's basically it. All right, sirs and zers, it's been a lovely, uh, it's been a lovely morning here with my tea. I've been drinking tea because uh, for whatever reason, there's sand in my throat and <laughs> it's like, you need to stop just uh, sucking up the fucking beach. Um, <laughs> and uh, and I think that's a good place for me to be leaving off. So as always, I want to be wishing you the best of the best. Take care, much love, and uh, and thank you for joining in, joining on in on this uh, on this flippant little conversation. Much love to all, and see you hopefully soon.